Hi, everyone. I'm Mark Rep, and today we're going to take a look at the Google Contacts app and what you can do with it. One thing you can do with it is you can make a contact label, also known as a group. And once you've created that group of staff members, for example, you could then take that contact group and share it with others. And I'll show you how to do that today. First, we have to find the Contacts app. And the easiest way to find it is just open up the Google page here. And there's a Google Apps button right here. Then scroll down and see if you can find it. Now, my contacts are right here. So I'm going to take that app and drag it all the way up this list. Sometimes you have to do it gradually. And I'll put it right up here at the very top. So when I click Contacts now, I'll be able to open it. And here it is, and I'd like to use it all day long. I use contacts quite often. So as it comes up, I'm going to right click and choose pin. And once it's pinned, I can then drag it to exactly where I want it. And I'd like to have it right next to my email. So I've got Gmail and then I've got my contacts. And right next to that, I've got my calendar. And next to that, I have my Google Drive. So these are things that I use every day. So I like to keep them running. And now what I'd like to do is create a contact group which Google calls a label. In order to do that, I come down here to labels and I click the plus sign where it says create label. So when I click the plus sign, it will allow me now to create a brand new label. I have the staff groups all set up, one for each school, and now I'd like to create a label for parents and I'll have all of them in one label. So I'll click save and you'll see that it automatically alphabetizes it. So it puts it right down here alphabetically on the list. There is no one inside of it yet. So I'll click on that label. And now I'm in the parents label with nobody in it. So in order to add somebody, I'll just click create contact, or I may already have some contacts already created in my contacts here, but I'll start all over and just click create contact. You can do one or more. If you click create multiple contacts, it will allow you to enter them here. Or if you have something you've created in Excel or Google Sheets that has a CSV extension, you can import that contact list as a CSV right here by clicking Import Contacts. Of course, you can just click Create a Contact and enter them one by one like this. Just hitting the Tab key each time as you go through the fields adding a phone number if you have one, and any notes that you'd like to add about that parent. And there are additional fields. At first, you'll be surprised at how many fields are included in the contact for each person. You can separate their home and work phone number by pressing the tab key, adding a label here. You can see the drop down, and you can do the same thing with their email address, separating their home and work email address. This little pencil button will also allow you to bring up any labels that you already have, and you can then add them to that label here. And you can put them in multiple labels at once. So if this parent was also a secretary, for example, at one of the schools, I could add this parent to both labels and then click apply. I can also create labels on the fly right here from this drop down manage labels box and create a whole new label here. So when I'm done adding the parent, I then click save and that parent is now added to my brand new parents contact label right here. There's my first parent. At any point, if I wanted to add additional information to this parent, I just come over here all the way to the right and click edit contact and I can add additional information here. To close it, just click the X and then to back out, just click the arrow and the back arrow will allow you to come back to where you started. Scroll up to contacts and if there was someone already in here that I wanted to add to a label, let's say that I'd like to move this person from one label to another. Just come all the way over to the right, click on more actions, that's the three dotted button. And right here, I can uncheck where she used to work and move her to a different building right here. And that's all you have to do. You don't even have to save anything. Just click away and that person has been moved. If you were to bring up that contact, you can double check to see that that person is in the correct groups. I have her in the all staff group and I also have her at this building. Other contact information can be edited right here. And if I wanna save this person to the top of my contacts, I can star the contact. And then when I go back to contacts here, that person is now at the very top. 
as one of my favorite contacts. So once you've got all your labels set up, what if you want to share them with someone else? That's easy to do as well, but it's a little different than it was a few years ago. So I'm going to take this particular label right here and I'd like to share it with other members of that group. So I'll click on it to select it. All the members of that contact label show up here. And now what I'd like to do is export this. Once I've got it all up to date, if I've got this contact label all set up for this particular school, now I can export it, making sure that it's selected in blue here. And I'm going to come up here to the top right corner and using this button, I can click export. I wanted central staff and you can see that because I highlighted it over here and selected it, it is now selected here as the contact label that I'm going to export. I'm going to export it as a Google CSV file and I'll click export. Now, as far as exporting labels, I like to have Google automatically ask me where I would like to store something that's been downloaded. And I'll show you how that happened in just a moment. So I'll just call this central contacts and I'd like to store it on my desktop so it's easy to find. I'll click save. If you'd like Google Chrome to ask you where you'd like to store downloaded files, such as exported contact labels, you can just click the three dots right here, go down to settings, and then go to downloads over here at the left, where it says ask where to save each file before downloading, I turn that on. If you want it to show downloads when they're done, you can also turn that on. So that's why it asked me where I would like to store that particular exported file. And I stored it on the desktop. Now, if I'd like to share this contact group with all of the members of that school, for example, next to the two box here, I'm going to blind carbon this by hitting BCC. All I need to do is type in central and because it's a saved Google contact label, it will bring up all of the members of that staff group. I'll send it to myself to give you an example of what this would look like. Now I'm going to attach that Google CSV file by clicking the paperclip, attach files. I saved it to my desktop. And here is the central contacts. Remember how I renamed it central contacts? Otherwise it would have just been called contacts. So I like to always give it a specific name. Once highlighted, I can click open or you can also double click to open it and it's been attached. And let's say I was sending this to a secretary who worked there so that she would have this contact group as well. This is how I would do it. Now I'm going to send it. And this is what it looks like on the other end when the other person who I sent it to just now receives it. Here's the attachment. And now that person can download it by clicking on the little download arrow. They can save it. I recommend storing this either in your downloads or your desktop. I like to store downloads on my desktop and then I delete them when I'm done. Now that person can store that contact label in his or her contacts. Opening up a new Google page, they would just click on the Google Apps button, go into the Contacts app, and now under Fix and Manage over here in the Contacts, that person can click Import to import the downloaded and shared contact label that I just shared with them by email. They can select the file, clicking the blue button there, locate it, this is the one I want, and then click Open or double click. Then to finish the import, click the Import button. And you'll see that it's been imported and it will give the date that it was imported. And there it is. It's been successfully imported. Now, just to answer a question that I know I will be getting in the future, will it be automatically updated on both ends? And the answer is no. It will have to be updated individually as staff members come and go by the creator of that group. It will not be automatically updated. So the secretary, for example, that I just sent this to would have to go into her contacts or his contacts, click on it, and then manually delete people as they retire or move. And that would be done right over here at the far right. Choose delete. 
and delete the person from the contact group manually. They are not synchronized automatically. So a little bit of manual work there will, that will have to be done to keep the contacts label all up to date for both people, the originator and the recipient. But it does save you a heck of a lot of work if it's been created and then shared. And just a note, make sure you don't delete the imported file over at the left, which shows up under the letter I alphabetically. This central staff is only a shortcut or link that leads you to that imported file. So if you delete the imported file, you also would delete this automatically. And that is a look at sharing contact labels in Google Contacts, which can then of course be used in your Gmail. I'm Mark Rep. Join me again for more tips throughout the school year. Thanks and bye-bye.